Thank you for never leaving us or forsaking us. Thank you, Lord, for being faithful to your word in every situation and every circumstance, Lord. We thank you for the healings that were released, amen, by faith today. The work that you had already done thousands of years ago, Lord, still manifesting in people's lives today. Because you're the same yesterday, today, and forever, Lord. We bless your name today. We praise you, lift you up, and magnify you because you alone are worthy of all praise and worship. Lord. We bless you today and thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that have gathered here today, Lord, for their families, for their loved ones. And, Lord, we just believe for supernatural increase and blessing in all of their lives, Lord. Whatever the need is, Lord, you already know what it is. We just release our faith in our God, in the God who cannot change, who always, amen, produces what he says. In Jesus' name, we praise you for it today. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Sunday school kids. If they haven't already bailed, they can. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. God's good. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I want to mention one thing before we uh, get going here this morning, and that is uh, Yvette and, and Debbie, if, if, if you want to move that stuff today, would you like to get it out into the other room? Is that what you were saying? That's what I thought you said. So if, if some of you guys will just hang around, it'll only take about 10, 15 minutes to get, I think, three, four, five tables, whatever it is. And just all we're going to do is carry them into the, into the larger room where the kitchen area is so that everybody doesn't have to go all through the place. So if you can, just stick around for 10, 15 minutes after the service, and uh, we'll get that accomplished, and they won't have to. Uh, I don't know if i got batteries or if it's dead or whatever. Hold on, everybody. We got a technical problem. It's all Nathan. There we go. Thank you. Praise the Lord. You know what they say? You got to be smarter than your tool, and sometimes that's not always the case. Amen. Thank the Lord. So, if you will, any of you that are that, that can, just for a couple, ten minutes or so, and we'll we'll get that accomplished, and then they won't have to fool with it the rest of the week, and they can get down to just doing what they do. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Thank the Lord. So, if uh, if you're holding a bee, what's in your eye? Come on, everybody knows that beauty's in the eye of the beeholder. No? I thought everybody knew that, but you know, I can't stand it when people repeat themselves pointlessly. I just can't stand it. I hate it when they just keep repeating themselves pointlessly. It just drives me crazy when they keep repeating themselves over and over for, for no reason. Okay, what do you call a boomerang when it doesn't come back? A stick. Exactly, Dan. Dan's been reading my books. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Uh, you're not supposed to know this stuff. Praise the Lord. Two snails, they're talking uh, on the sidewalk, and one says, you know, i got to cross the road, and the other says, you better hurry up. There's a bus coming in an hour and a half. <laughs> You know, I, I don't go to the fair much anymore, and I hope nobody takes this the wrong way, but I met two guys at the fair, and they were wearing matching clothes. So, I mean, I know I'm not always politically correct. I didn't mean anything evil by it or anything. I just said, so, are you guys gay? And they arrested me. <laughs> Dressed alike, they were. I'm sure I'll get some letters or calls or emails or something about that, but believe me, I'm not being ugly here. Okay, God's good, amen, all the time, and uh, so we'll, we'll move right into this message today. Let's start with uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 through 21, Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1, and we'll read verses 19 through 21. Praise the Lord.
So we have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein to ye do well, that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. This is all prophecy. Everything in here yeah. is prophetic. Yeah. And so he says, the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Can you go back to 19 again, Peter? Yeah. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Now, in the old covenant, you had chosen men and women that were prophets or prophetesses. Mm -hmm. Under the new covenant, we are all prophets, and the reason is because we have a more sure word of prophecy. We, if you stick with the true word of prophecy here, you're not going to miss it. Amen. Now, under the old covenant, they could miss it. They could, they could try to interpret some things because most of the time they had no idea what it was they were really talking about. Right. It might have addressed a, a, an immediate situation, but there was a greater prophetic truth that was t t pointing towards Christ and pointing towards the future where we are now today. Mm -hmm. So he tells us that, look, I believe in prophets. I believe in, in men and women who have the gift of prophecy, which is true of all of us. It's just that we don't all activate that gift or we don't all operate in the gift the way we should. So there's a more sure word of prophecy other than just something that somebody com that comes to somebody. And all of us that have been in you know, uh, Pentecostal, apostolic kinds of churches have probably been burnt by a prophet you know, or heard a, somebody who claimed to be a prophet and then they just come and basically rant and, and condemn everybody to hell and everything bad that's going to happen. That's not, that's not New Covenant. That's not New Testament prophecy. Because if it isn't in here, I don't want to hear it. If it, isn't, if it isn't edifying, if it isn't building up and encouraging, which is what it's supposed to do, then it's not from God. It's just somebody else's opinion. And we know about opinions, praise the Lord. So let's, let's move on then to Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that had the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Yeah. Praise the Lord. All right, Hebrews chapter 4. Verses 1 and 2. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. That word promise can, can be uh, translated prophecy. The reason Israel didn't fulfill the call that God had on their lives, on, on them uh, as a people, is because they didn't believe what God had said. Amen. So they wouldn't enter in to the promised land, right? And for 40 years and a whole generation dies and so on and so forth. So this is, this is what this is referring to, but it's also speaking to us today. So let us therefore fear lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest or into the finished work of Christ, amen, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So without... Uh, unfolding uh, prophetic revelation, something that expands your uh, capacity to see life from God's perspective, you're going to be stuck with your natural situation and circumstances. Praise the Lord. The, the one problem is that, you know, I think a lot of Christians just don't tune into God's revelation. In other words, they're still looking at the Bible as a rule book or regulations or things that you have to do in order to please God. No, it, it's this. This is the key to the kingdom. This is a thing that produces everything that God has ever said. The, this is God talking to us. Right. Amen. And so uh, this, what the, the scripture teaches us is that the word of God in a believer's mouth is prophecy. That's what Paul's talking about. I would that you all prophesy. I, in other words, he's saying, I wish to God that all of you would say what God says about every situation you're confronted with. Because you have the capacity. We all have the gift of prophecy. 
but we want to prophesy what God has already prophesied. We're echoing. We're doing exactly what Isaiah talked about when he said the God said his word comes down like rain or snow and it waters the ground and earth and it produces whatever it said. You know, whatever he said is not going to come back to him void. That word that comes down to us is right here. It's prophetic. And if we'll say it back, if we'll prophesy the word of God, it will produce. It has to produce after its own kind. It can't do anything else. Amen. And so let's look at this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. So I understand lots of times we don't know what to pray. We don't know what to say. We don't know what to do. I, I agree with Peter, and I do most of the time at night, especially when I wake up and I've got some kind of anxiety or something. I'm worrying about this thing or that thing, and, you know, kids and family and, and whatever it might be, a decision you have to make and, and those kinds of things. I just pray in tongues because most of the time I don't know exactly how to pray. I, don't, I mean, I can pray, God, protect them, look out for them, you know, love them. But, you, you know, there's something in you that's just wanting to get confidence you know that there's a, there's a, a kind of an echo that tells you okay it's good you know we got this thing yeah. and praying in tongues usually does that for me but we've received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth but which the Holy Ghost teacheth comparing spiritual things with spiritual praise the Lord but the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So the key is to open your spirit man to the direct revelation of God. In other words, I, it's, it's not as complicated as it might sound because what we're really saying is when I read this, I believe it. Mm -hmm. That's opening your spirit man up to what God is really saying. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be you know, some ethereal, you know, weird feeling or anything else. It's just simply saying, okay, I'm choosing to believe this no matter what. Regardless of what I'm seeing, regardless of what I'm hearing, regardless of what I'm feeling, this is the truth. That's the spirit. That's operating by the spirit mind rather than the carnal mind. Because your carnal mind is just going to keep dragging you back to say, well, yeah, but you still got pain. Well, yeah, but the bills still do. Yeah, but you, got, you know what I'm saying. So this is, the, this is the, the eyes and the ears of the spirit are just something that's going to look at this and agree with this. Praise the Lord. Amen. So uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. And I want to get to a place today where I can show you something that I think God, I, I, I've kind of done ministry around this before. I don't, I don't think I've preached exactly this, but I've preached some things about this. How, how uncomplicated the process really is, but we make it complicated. And he gives us pictures throughout the Word of God for us to see the process that he's wanting us to operate in. Amen. And so, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for us or for them that love him. This is what Tammy was talking about. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Praise the Lord. So revelation isn't uh, something that you can get from religion. It's not something you can get from theology. It's, it, it just won't happen doctrinally. It doesn't work out that way. It's not even something you can unravel in the Bible by yourself. Because how many, of, how many of you have read scriptures hundreds of times over the years, and it's true, you, you agree with it, but all of a sudden, one day you read it, and bang, it's like an explosion. All of a sudden, it means much more. It go, it's like there's a depth to it that you didn't understand before, and that's what I'm talking about. It, it's unraveled by the Holy Spirit. In other words, it just quickens it to your spirit mind and your mind and the spirit connect and go yeah okay I get what the what the heck why haven't I seen this before you know and then what happens is generally everywhere you look there's confirmations in the Bible you'll start saying whoa I, it's here all the time and that's telling me the same thing that told me and why didn't why didn't I get it you know so that's that's the thing I'm talking about it has to be revealed amen all right first Corinthians chapter 2 verses 6 through 8 this time Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. That's perfected in Christ, right? That's us. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Now don't kid yourself that Satan didn't have 
access to the Old Testament. <laughs> Amen. He just didn't understand it. He didn't have the spirit to quicken or to reveal to him really what it was all about. Otherwise, they would have never killed Jesus. I mean, that's a given, right? So mystery, the truth is, though, for most of us, mystery isn't something most people appreciate. We want facts. We want answers. We want evidence. You know, we don't want a mystery. We don't want to have to try to figure it. But it is a mystery. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And that's what he's telling us. Sometimes, sometimes God reveals this wisdom to us in, in a way that seems kind of clouded or, or vague, you know. That's the mystery. So that you will pursue him, amen, and not just whatever it is you're looking for or you're wanting. The, the spirit of, of uh, prophetic revelation opens up our knowledge of who God is first, amen. amen. And from that comes the release of power from heaven. Amen? All right, Mark chapter 6. Let's look at this. Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, Peter. Mark 6, 1 through 6. And it's speaking about Jesus here, and it says, he went, And he went out from thence and came into his own country. His disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which he given unto us, or unto him? What is this wisdom that was given to him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Mm -hmm. Is not this carpenter the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and of Judah and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went around about the villages teaching. So these scriptures actually uh, show how the carnal mind is this weapon that the enemy uses. And it's a horrible weapon. The natural mind can be used against us. And that's what the devil does. He tries to get your, the sense realm to dominate you. Through the natural mind. Amen. And that causes us to reject the very answer that we're looking for. Amen. Right? We, you, you know what you, what you need and what God has promised. But the natural mind, it rejects that. It just doesn't want to. And it's the enemy. It's the thing that you're actually fighting against as much or more than the devil. He just has to plant a thought or, or a situation. And then we just go crazy with it. Amen. So these people in Nazareth were stunned by what Jesus was teaching at first. I mean, they were flabbergasted, right? And it stirred them up, and it got their attention. Well, when he started teaching in the synagogue, they said to each other, wow, where, where did he learn this stuff? Right? That's what we were just read here. It's amazing, they're thinking. And they were impressed. And that created an environment where Jesus could do miracles in order to illustrate the power of what it was he was teaching. Amen? But here's the deal. Then they begin to reason, and they said, wait a minute, we know this guy. This is that Jesus kid. He grew up here. We know his dad. We know his mom. We know his family. We know his brothers, his sisters. How's he doing all these miracles? And the mind of these people became offended at Jesus. And it's not the kind of offense where somebody hurts you, but it's, it's intellectual offense. When you have an unanswered question that blocks your ability to trust in what you can't see. And every one of us go through it. When we have a word from God, we're hearing Jesus talk to us. But there's this offense that comes because how many times have we been down this road and nothing happened? It didn't work. It didn't do this. It didn't do that. And we get mentally offended. Our carnal mind becomes offended at the spirit, amen, and we get into unbelief. We get into disbelief, amen. So uh, look at Acts chapter 14, verse 22, Peter. Acts 14, 22. This, this goes to what uh, Tim was talking about too earlier. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Now, the tribulation isn't coming from God. Tribulation is just in the world because it's a fallen world and we're in it, yeah. right? So it's through this natural realm that we have to overcome to get into the kingdom realm. Amen. 
And that's what he's referring to. He's confirming that the souls of the disciples or their, their, their thinking, the way they think, that's what the soul realm is, your, your will, mind, will, and emotions, and so forth, and exhorting them because that was what was trying to dominate them. If you see it all through Jesus' ministry, the disciples were constantly not getting it, right? Even up to the crucifixion and after, they, they couldn't. Why? Because their natural mind was offended at some of the things he said. Yeah. Peter, one minute he's saying, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. A couple of minutes later, he's saying, hey, you're not going to the cross. <laughs> not if I'm around. Not if I have anything to say about it. He said, get behind me, Satan. So you see what I'm saying? And that we must go through much tribulation into, into the kingdom of God. Amen? So it's through tribulation that we enter. Ezekiel, now look, I want you to pay close attention. You all, I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have read this many times and we've talked about it ourselves. But I want you to pay close attention to it because I'm not going to keep going back uh, to cite each one of these scriptures. I'm just going to go forward for the sake of time. So in Ezekiel chapter 37, Peter, we want to read verses 1 through 14. So this is Ezekiel speaking, and he says, The hand of the Lord was upon me. Now, Ezekiel was an Old Testament prophet. So connect here. This is us that God's talking to, and we are the prophets or the ones who prophesy in this time, right? And so the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the Spirit. So God's trying to give us a picture of how we are to operate today as believers. Amen? And he carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. In other words, they've been dead for a long time. Those bones have been out there for a long time. Nothing, nothing on them anymore. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh, Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now the Lord, he could have just done it, but he doesn't. He wants pe He's using people. Now he's limited himself to what he'll do in this earth, and that limitation is us. If we don't do it, it don't get done. That's the bottom line, okay? So I will, and he says, I, I will cause, thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold... I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. This is Ezekiel speaking, what God was saying to him. Amen? Yeah. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, yeah. and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Yes. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, <coughs> bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, mm -hmm. but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came in, excuse me, the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you in to the land of Israel. Praise the Lord. So the Lord has Ezekiel walk through all of these human bones in the valley. And then God asked if he thought these bones could come together and live. And, of course, Ezekiel says, only you know that, God. Yeah. Right? Ezekiel says, uh, you're the only one that can answer that question, Lord. So God told the prophet that they could and they would live if he would prophesy to this valley of, of dry bones. And according to Romans 12, as we've said, we have the same gift, the same prophecy, gifting of, 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 of prophecy. So those bones, those bones represented the whole house of Israel. They were away from God, and they were dry, and they were scattered. So God said the prophesying of the prophet would be the key that would bring life, restoration, and activation of God's people into the army of the Lord. Amen. This word 
will produce yes. what it says if it can find somebody yes. to prophesy. Yes. Amen? Yes. So this wasn't going to happen, though, amen, all at once. It wasn't going to just be like that. How many of you all have declared the word of God, prophesied the word of God over a situation or circumstance and, and didn't see an immediate response or an immediate reaction? Amen? All right. God tells him that it rarely happens that way. It's usually a process that takes place step by step. And it follows the same pattern, whether it's a prophecy to the world, to a nation, uh, to a church, or to an individual. There's eight progressive steps that take place, and God has laid them out in this story that he tells us, this metaphor for uh, Israel's being uh, discarded or disbanded or separated from the Lord and from his promises. Amen? So the first thing, the first step, is noise. The noise came from two sources. It was the thundering voice of prophecy. Look at this in uh, Psalms 29. Uh, verses 3 through 11. So the first thing that happens is noise. And the noise comes from two sources. And the first noise is from the prophecy itself or from the voice of the Lord. And he says, the voice of the Lord, this is uh, Psalms uh, 29. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters of the God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. He maketh them also to skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young unicorn. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. And the voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calve and discovereth the forest. And in his temple doth everyone speak of his glory. The Lord sitteth upon the flood. Yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the voice of the Lord is repeated seven times, which is the uh, number of fulfillment or God's number. Amen. It's, it's repeated seven times and it describes what the voice is and what it does. Amen. So the second noise, that was the first noise. The second noise, first noise is prophecy, the prophetic word that went forth, the voice of the Lord in your mouth. Amen. So the second thing was the noise, or the second noise was all of those bones are coming together. Yeah. Now, imagine millions of bones suddenly rising up at the commanding of the prophecy, flying around, bumping into each other, amen, banging around, trying to find their place in the human skeleton. It says bone to his bone. They were trying to find the skeleton they belonged to, not just this bone went here and that one went there. It was trying to get to where it was supposed to be. Amen. So the first thing that happens in the prophetic process is the sound of prophecy being spoken. Amen. And as people and things, I'm, I'm making the transition here, that as people and things begin to respond to that word, amen, the same kind of confusion and rustling about takes place as when the bones arose and started coming together. Ever had a prophecy spoken, usually everything just gets chaotic. I mean, you, you got a word from the Lord, but it ain't looking like anything you thought it was supposed to look like, right? right. It's, it's happening in a different way. We hear the, this progressive, uh, amen, noisy voices of confusion and concern, and then if you stay with it, if you don't give up, if you don't give in, eventually clarity comes. Clarity. The first sign of a creative prophecy isn't usually peace and harmony, but noise and confusion. But if we hold fast, if we hold steady in faith, eventually clarity with a clear prophetic direction comes forth. Amen. What happens usually is we give up because yeah. the confusion and everything else, we think, well, God's not in this, and so we'll move on to try yeah. something else. Mm. The second thing that happens is shaking. Mm. The, in the prophetic process, there is a great shaking. We, I talked about last week the speed of light. Sally and I were talking about this later, and then Tammy came over, and, and we talked a little bit with her because she wasn't up here for the message. And, but I said, I, I was making the analogy of this. We were talking about light last Sunday, and, 
and that being the revelation of God and God's influence in the earth and so forth. And I said, you know, I was thinking about this. I didn't say it in the message. I rarely, you know, that's what you do the next day is sit around and wish you had said something else. It's like the stupid arguments you get into with somebody and you think, gosh, I wish I would have said that. That was perfect comeback, you know. Well, it's kind of that way when you preach, you think afterwards, oh, I should have said that. That would have made a great example and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, this is what I was thinking. And I remember reading uh, Chuck Yeager, who was, I think, one of the first ones to break the sound barrier or, or Mach 1. And he said, his, the way he described it was he thought this plane was going to just fall apart. It was shaken so bad when he reached the speed of sound. He said it shook. It made, there was horrible noise, you know, roaring going on. And then he broke the sound barrier. And when he broke the sound barrier, what happened? Sound. Bang! There's this huge sonic boom. When you, whenever you hear it every once in a while, when a plane, if a plane goes over yeah. this flying that quickly, it, it creates a vacuum behind it and it just explodes, you know, as it goes through it. So it's, it's the speed of sound. Well, light is the same way. What happens when you reach the speed of light? Bang! Light. It's light everywhere. Yes. Amen? No darkness anymore. Well, so the point here is it never fails. After a person receives a prophetic word and claims that promise from the Bible or whatever, that person goes through a shaking in his or her life. Something will come to challenge what it is they're believing for or they're agreeing with. Amen? Hebrews 12, uh, verse 27, Peter. I mean, it's, it's rare that you get a scripture and go settled. You get it, you hope it's settled, and you're confessing it, and you're believing that it is, but everything from hell yeah. will come against you to deny that reality, to get you to focus on the, the natural stuff that you're dealing with or wanting to overcome rather than what the Word of God says. There's a shaking. I mean, it's trying to shake you loose from your belief in what God has said. Amen. Amen. So this Word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken. This Word... This word once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. What things are, are shaken that remain? The things that are made. The spirit things. The spiritual things. Amen? So, praise God. Isaiah 40, uh, verses 3 through 5, Peter. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. So he says, they're going to make straight the, the path of the Lord. So the Lord has direct access. And what happens in order for that to do that? It's a bunch of shaking. There's mountains coming down. There's valleys coming up. Amen. And in Haggai 2, it says the same thing. We won't go there for the sake of time. But look, let's look at Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 10. And this is when Jeremiah is commissioned a prophet. And look what he says. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build up and to plant. Yes. Praise the Lord. So when God does this, there's a shaking before the planting. There's a shaking before the building. There's a shaking before the manifestation. Yeah. Amen. So the divine principle then uh, in the prophetic process is that it nearly always gets worse before it gets better. Can you say praise the Lord? Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it's not exciting, but it's true nevertheless. Amen. John 8, 31 and 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue, everybody say continue. continue, continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. But you have to continue, right? Yes. Mark chapter 4, uh, verses 13 through 15. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable, and how then will you know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside, 
where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their heart. Just shows you exactly what the devil's agenda is. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. If you received a prophecy, as we have, as the church has, generally, I'm speaking of, or a personal prophecy over your own life, amen, whether it's deliverance or prosperity or whatever it might be, and yet everything seems to be doing the opposite by falling apart or getting worse, then rejoice. You're in stage two of a prophetic process. Amen. Hold steady in faith. Do not let go. Stand on his word. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 and 36. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Praise the Lord. Contradictions. You can't let the contradictions keep you from continuing to believe the truth. Even though what you're experiencing is trying to contradict what God has promised. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12. Or excuse me. Yeah, 12. And just drop down to verse 25 through 28. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. We're still talking about the prophetic word, the word of God. Amen. Whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifies the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. So he's saying, I'm going to shake loose all the carnal, all the natural, amen, so that the spirit will remain, so that the truth will remain, amen. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Praise the Lord. He's just saying, how do we do that? By agreeing with him, by saying what he says. Amen. amen. Galatians chapter 6 and 9. Galatians 6 verse 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. Right, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So number three, then, in this process is coming together. After the Lord's taken care of everything that he wants shaken down or, or, or removed and adjusted, amen, uh, he, he adjusts our focus, amen, uh, so it's uh, on faith. Amen. The focus then is on God and not on the circumstances. Again, this is what Tim was talking about. Instead of talking about your problem, talk about God. Yeah. Tell your problem about God instead right. of telling God about your problem. Right. Amen. God already knows about the problem. Right. Amen. He just needs to have faith so that you can have the results that right. you're looking for. Amen. Now, because once that happens, once God gets everything shook loose, the carnal thinking and everything else, so that you're now focused on faith and on His Word. Amen. Then, he begin, then begins the time when plans begin to come together. You, you kind of get, start getting ideas about maybe I can do this or should, maybe God's trying to tell me I should do this. Or people. He'll bring people into your life. The, even the scripture talks about giving. It's given unto you, pressed down, shaken together. Shall men give unto your bosom? So God will influence people, amen, to help with whatever the situation is. Amen. Or he'll, he'll uh, give you divine uh, plan or purpose, a way of doing it, some, something that just comes to you and you go, I, I can do that. I think I can try that. Amen. So the, the, then these provisions come. 
right? Things start to come together. You got the prophecy, but everything seems to be going the wrong way and everything's getting shaken, but then all of a sudden, gradually, provision for that thing shows up. Or a person shows up who can help you with that situation. Yeah. Amen? Or, uh, or a plan. Maybe God will just give it to you in a dream or you, you're, you're just doing something that has absolutely nothing to do with it and all of a sudden you go, why didn't I think of that? I think this will work, you know? Okay? So we're supposed to be, we're called to walk in a restored truth. Truth has never changed. It's the same, just like God, the same yesterday, today, and forever. But it's restored when we walk away from it or we don't put our confidence in it. So uh, we're called to walk in restored truth, and we will, together, bone to bone. Now, here's what, here's what God told me. It may be a skeleton group, but not forever. Praise the Lord. Yes. I believe it. I believe that's what the Lord. And it, see, to me, it's a long time coming. Yes. But to God, yes. it's all happening now. Yes. Right? And the focus has to be on that, on that yes. truth. Right. Praise the Lord. It looks like the crap hit the fan, right? Yes. I mean, like nothing's going to. Mm -hmm. But no, God said, you and your house yes, will be right. saved. Yes. You will be blessed. You will be whole. Right, Rita? I mean, it's the same yes. thing. We all have been there. Yes. But you've got to hang on. You, you, what's the choice? Let go because things are shaking? No, you hang on tighter. When things start to shake, you get a, you get, just get another grip and hang on. Because once everything's shaken that can be shaken, that should be shaken, it's going to all calm down. And it will be peace. Amen. Thank the Lord. All right, number four then. After the skeleton of this prophetic purpose has come together, the thing that will give you strength is needed. All right, so the process is working, but you need strength to hang on. You, you need something to help you. Amen? So God puts sinews and flesh yeah. on the body to give it strength. Yes. Amen? Fullness. Amen? Yeah. Divine enablement. Yep. Thank you, God. Praise the Lord. So when individuals' life is going through this stuff, through this prophetic process. Step four is when God gives the divine enablement and wisdom to act on the prophetic word. The courage. Yep. Yes. All of a sudden, this is what I need to do. Yep. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm just going to do it. It's, yep. it's the right thing. Amen? To act on the prophetic word and to put muscle and fullness into the prophetic promise. Yep. To put some meat behind it, in other words. Amen? Put flesh on it. Make it a reality. It's no longer just a, 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 something in your head or something that's just kind of rolling around out there. All of a sudden, it begins to take some form. It begins to look yeah. like something that is real. Amen? Yeah. All right? That's, that's number four. Number five, that's skin. Amen? This is all part of Ezekiel's thing. You can go back and read it later. But yes. skin, that's, that's the protective covering on a body to keep out negative elements that it encounters. Yes. yes. Right? You get an open wound, what happens? It gets infected yes. because there's no skin over it to protect what's underneath yep. from the invasion of the yes. junk that's in the world around yes. you, the germs, the bio, the, all the junk, right? So if a human body, for example, is covered with second and third degree burns, first of all, it can't hold in the fluids that are in it. First thing that happens is they dehydrate and they start having internal problems because the body can't hold the fluids in. The fluids are all coming to the surface. Now think about Jesus. He, he's given us a river. In you, you're, I'll be like a river yeah. in you. Right? Well, if you... Well, don't let me get too far ahead of myself. But you can suffer in the spirit and it's like that river flows not out to somebody, but just away from you, to where you're not putting your confidence in that Jesus that's in you. Amen? So here's, here's what I'm saying. It can't hold the fluids, and it can't protect itself from the germs if it's got third-degree burns. Yeah. A person that is in that condition has to be isolated in a germ-free environment, wrapped with an artificial covering. You ever seen anybody that's been through yeah. bad burns like that? And a lot of us have been spiritually burnt. Amen? Some even may have some third degrees spiritual burns. 
And that makes it hard to hold on to peace and joy when you're going through the stuff. Amen. And it leaves you with no protection against the germs of discouragement, doubt, fear, unbelief. In the prophetic process, the skin stage represents several areas. You need to keep the promises, the word of God as a covering yes. and a protection. Yes. You need covering from the church. Yes. That's why he says in those days, these are those days yeah. 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 when all hell's breaking loose and it's getting darker and darker and it looks like what the heck are we going to do? He said, forsake not the assembling of yeah. yourselves together yes. as some yeah. do. Why? Because this is, the, this is part of the skin. This is part of the covering that's going to encourage you. The testimonies we heard this morning, the prayer request, your faith encourages my faith. It's yeah. like, okay, I'm not the only crazy person in the world. There's yeah. others out there that believe like I believe. There's yeah. others who have seen this too. Yes. And that's part of this covering that he's talking about, part of the skin, amen, yes. that protects us. Because spiritually, the skin covering is the garment of praise. Yes. I love, I love, <laughs> praise God. I love what Rita said. All I can do is sing, raise yes. my voice. to. That's the yes. garment of praise. It's yes. the covering, Rita, that protects you from the germs, from the environment that we are in, a world of darkness, amen, who reject everything of God, amen. But when we lift our voice to the Lord in the middle of all of our crap, that's a, that's a voice of praise, and God calls it a garment. It's a covering, amen, that protects you from the invasion of fear and doubt and unbelief. That dominates this dark world that we that live in. The skin covering is the garment of praise. And it's a it's a positive, forgiving attitude towards everybody. I've had some weird crap happen here in the last couple of weeks and heard stuff and uh, said about me and I'm, I, I was so can we say the words I want to say to tell you how upset I was. <laughs> angry. I mean, really angry. Yeah. To the point where it was create. It, I was, I could feel it in me. You know, I could feel it just yeah. like, man, I, I, I really need to set this thing straight, you know. And <laughs> seriously. Yeah. And the more I resisted that, even though it was in my mind all the time, and it's, I got to tell you, it still comes and goes. But, but it's not dominating the way it was initially. Because the more I kind of backed away from it, the Lord said, you know what? This crap isn't about you. This is for you. If you, if you can keep your cool and trust me, I am your reward. I am your guard. I am your, I'm your protection. I, I'll, I'll settle it. Let me, let me straighten this out. Don't you just go retaliate. Just shut up. I'll settle it. And when it's settled, it will be settled. It won't just be a, an extension of this thing. It'll be the end of it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Praise the Lord. Glory. The not responding is my way of saying, praise the Lord. I'm going to trust you, Lord. That's you know right. how bad I want to act like a complete jerk. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you know I do. Yeah. But I'm going to shut up. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. And I'm going to be happy even if, it's, even if I'm faking it. Yeah. For you, because I know that you're the only one that can really set this thing right. Yeah. All I can do is make it worse. Yeah, so I'm going right. to shut the hell up yeah. and trust you yeah. from heaven to deal with that's the situation. Right. Ever been there, Sheila? Oh, yeah. You know what you want to do. <laughs> the Lord told me a long time ago, I am your shield yes. and exceeding great reward. And whenever I've kept that in my heart, it is true. It happens that way. Amen. When I get out in front and want to yes. kind of show myself, crap happens and it gets worse and it just gets even more aggravated. Right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, skin represents the thing that enables us to adjust to different circumstances in life exactly what I'm talking about here right now. Because I know what Nathan would like to do. What would 
make me feel good for a moment. Right. Yep. But skin enables us to adjust to different circumstances. You know, your skin helps your body adapt to hot weather and to cold weather. Pores open up in the, when it's hot and your body perspires and it helps to cool the body down. When it's cold, those pores close down, retain the body heat. You know, I mean, it, that's what the skin is for. It, 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 praise the Lord. God put skin on those bones because they needed some protection. Praise the Lord. We need to develop thick skin. You got to have tough hide to make it. I mean, if you live very long in this world, people are going to rub you the wrong way. They're, they're going to go out of their way to see if they can't yeah. find that trigger, that button to push, you know, the bear to poke, whatever it might be. Amen. Thin-skinned people will struggle. Yeah. And God's raising up an army. Yes. Not a bunch of sissies, not a bunch of people no. sitting around whining because right. somebody hurt my feelings and yeah. now they're talking about me and... No, God's raising up an army. We need to learn to endure hardship. Yeah. That's the kind of hardship he's talking about. When everybody don't like you like you think they should like you. Because yeah. you're a good guy. Yeah. Right? You're a good person. You know? I wouldn't do anything to them. Why would they talk about me like that? You know? Yeah. All those you got to get some thick skin yeah. and not be easily offended. Mm. Just let it go. Let God take care of it. Amen? Because thin people struggle. Thin-skinned people struggle with life. Everything is a hassle. Everything is a challenge. Everything is a, you know, anxiety driven, right? Praise the Lord. Okay, look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Praise the Lord. There, now therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. You don't let the crap in this life control you or manipulate you or dominate your thinking so that you can please him who has chosen you to be a soldier, to be in the army of God. Amen? Okay, number six is the breath of life. So when God started this process or this prophetic process of let us make man, because that's where this thing started. It goes clear back to the garden. This is just an extension of that. God's just showing us how he did it, how we're supposed to do it, just like he did with let there be light. You know, you say what is not, and it becomes. You look at the things that are not as though they are. Okay? So he says, first he shook the earth, and then he, he picked up a handful of clay, and he built a bone structure. Yeah. Amen? This is Adam. And then he put sinew and flesh on that skeleton, and he covered it with skin. And finally, God took that body of man and he breathed into it the breath of life and man became a living soul. Yes. Ezekiel's first prophesying caused the first five steps of the prophetic process to take place. But he had to prophesy again to bring life into that body. Remember at the end of that scripture that we were reading and God said, now, you know, here's what you need to do now. You've, you've given the prophecy and all that has taken place, but we still got a dead body here. We got a body, but it's still yes. dead. So you need to prophesy to the wind. Mm. Have the wind Jesus. from all four corners come, amen? Jeez. And so he had to, the first five steps were taken care of, but he had to prophesy again to bring life into that body. Resurrection life is what we're talking about. Jesus' life flows into us individually yes. and as a church when we stand in faith yes. on his word. Yes. It doesn't happen just because we belong to a church or just because we call ourselves this or the other, you know, in terms of denominational stuff. No, it comes from resurrection life. It comes when our focus is on him and what his word has said. Life comes out of that. He said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. They're not just, you know, wandering, rambling talk. They are spirit life. Yes. Amen. And the result is you stand up and you start marching as an army. You're no longer cowering, fearful, and, and threatened. Now you're part of this army. It's like, again, it's like Tim said. You know, the, the, the prophet's uh, servant was freaked out. Why? Because he saw all the stuff that was in the natural. He just didn't see what was going on in the spirit. Yeah. But when we come to faith in God's yes. word and stand on that word, we rise up a mighty army greater than any enemy that's come against us. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. 
Praise the Lord. A special glory and demonstration is the result of resurrection life. When we make that the focus. Praise the Lord. Behold, he said, I do a new thing. I'm doing it through you. Number seven. The army of the Lord. So the end result of the prophesying of Ezekiel was that the, the scattered uh, valley of dry bones was brought together with muscle and flesh and then the breath of life and it became an exceedingly great army. Yeah. Now we're still talking about, for us, we're still talking about the word of God, the prophetic word, amen, yeah. and how that affects us. And yeah. These are the steps, right? Yeah. So we become a great and exceeding army. What does that mean? It means victory over every enemy. Yeah. If you're a great and exceeding army, that means you're greater than any other army around. You're exceeding them. You're over them. You're more powerful yes. than them. Amen. Just the same as what uh, the prophet said to his servant. Yes. Hey, he that's with us is greater than he that's in the world. He said, those that are for us are way more than those that are against yes. us. The, the ones that you can't see are far greater and more of them than the ones you can see. Yeah. Wow. Praise the Lord. So the result is this prophesying is that you stand up and start marching as an army. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Victory over every enemy. Spoils from the enemy. Whatever the devil has taken, he's got to give back seven yes, times, yes. sevenfold. Amen. Yes. Healing, yes. prosperity, yes. relationships, deliverance. It all comes from resurrection life. Yes. True. Revive all. Yes. We call it revival. God calls it revive all. Yes. Everything. Yes. Everybody who believes. <clears throat> Amen. First Corinthians chapter six, verses two and three. Praise the Lord. It's not done. Do you not know that the saints shall judge of the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Mm -hmm. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? God's given us this kind of authority. He's saying, if, you've got, if you realize the authority that I've given you to judge the world yeah. and angels, yeah. how much more? the normal crap that happens in life. Romans 8, 17 through 19. And if children, then heirs. Not sub-heirs, right? joint heirs, equal heirs. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, that's just the tribulations of life, are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Right. Praise the Lord. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Yes. For this thing to put on, yes. this bones to come together, the sinews, the muscle, the flesh to come over it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Resurrection life to flow into it and then stand up this great army. That's what the creation is looking for. They're waiting for this thing that God has prophesied from before the foundation of the world. Praise the Lord. Verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We are the exceeding great army through him that loved us. Yep. Praise the Lord. John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall you do, because I go to my Father so that I can send back resurrection life mm -hmm. to you so that you can do the same things I've done mm -hmm. and greater. Praise the Lord. Now, 
Number eight, the final one, is the restoration to homeland for Israel. But for us, it's to take the kingdom. The final result for Israel in this prophetic process was that they would take back their homeland, which had been prophetically promised to their father, Abraham. The final result of the prophetic process for us is we take back what belongs to our father, God. And that's this earth and everything that's in it. He created it. It's his. It belongs to him. Amen. Planet earth belongs to God and the righteous, not the devil and the wicked. Amen. Amen. Israel was promised they're getting their homeland back, and God has promised the same thing to us by the Spirit. Amen? Our homeland is the kingdom of God, ruling and reigning and dominating in this earth. Praise the Lord. All right, Revelation chapter 10 and verse 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants, the prophets. In the days of the voice of the seventh angel, this is the fullness. This seven is the fullness of God. It's the fullness of time. It's the, it's the wrapping up of this whole thing, right? So in that day, the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. What was the mystery of God? We read it clear back at the very beginning of this. He's raising up an army. He's raising up a people that weren't a people to become his people, to become his offspring. The mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. That's us. Or anybody who will believe it and act on it. Praise the Lord. The fullness of truth brings fullness of life. Anointing power. The ability to produce and fully possess Every promise of God. Yes. That's what he's talking about is going to happen in the last days. Not, not after we get to heaven. That happens here before everything wraps up. There's a people who will begin to operate as prophets as God had in initially intended. And he's going to raise them up and they're going to be a mighty army. And yes. they're going to experience the fullness yes. of these promises. Yes. They're going to experience the yes. resurrection power as no other generation has before. Yes, Lord. That's yes. us. That is. If we will believe. Praise the Lord. Prophecy, the word of God activates dry bones. It brings them together. It brings life into a body and causes it to rise up. It's God speaking. Amen. God is creator. When he speaks, things are created. Amen. They're brought into existence. Things that didn't exist before he said it. That's what we got to do. Faith, God's word. Prophecy, it activates the predestined purpose of God. You hear what I'm saying? This makes what God said happen. Praise the Lord. It puts life to it. It puts bones on it. It puts skin on it. It it gives it it gives it life. Yes. So here's the bottom line. I'll wrap this up. Believe God and be established. Believe and receive. Now, you don't have to go there, Peter, but 2 Chronicles 20, 20 says this. And it's what it says is, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Amen. If you believe what God has said, you'll be established in that. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophecy, so shall ye prosper. Yeah. You prosper to the degree that you believe what he said. Whatever the area, whether it's healing, whether it's financial, whether it's relational, it doesn't matter, whatever it is. So I'll just wrap it up with this. Opportunity does not make heroes. That's what they used to tell us in the Marine Corps. It only reveals them. You're not made a hero because you're in a tight situation. You're just revealed. You have just been revealed for what you really are in that situation. Praise the Lord. I'm talking to some people here that are heroes of the faith. People that God has predestined to be here in this time, in this life, in this place, to rise up a great army and be a revelation to God in this earth that nobody can deny.
Praise the Lord. Yes. You're here to reveal that right. the hero that God has declared you to be. Yes. Give him a hand clap. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Let's, let's believe what he has said and let's declare it. Get a death grip on that rope. Tie a knot in the end of it, as they say, you know, when you're running out of rope. And just hang on and believe God and watch him work. Praise the Lord. Amen. Again, God bless all of you. If you can stay for just a few minutes, appreciate it. Any of you that can. And we'll get those tables moved out so the uh, ladies can uh, have the materials where they need them to, to deal with. Okay? God bless you all. Have a great week. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.